This is Antstream Arcade, a new cloud-based gaming platform, and I'm going to be taking a look at it and giving you some insights into the service, as well as taking a trip through some of my arcade favourites. Yes, it's a game streaming service, basically one with a very heavy focus on retro games. A really good selection, in fact. I've got to say, I was sold right from the start on this because it has, well, let's say games that are relevant to my interests and probably yours too if you're a fan of my channel. Let's have a look at Space Invaders. Yeah, you might have seen this game before and it's not actually the oldest game on the service, I think, but a really important one and yes, it was insanely popular and insanely influential. A classic, those iconic aliens, the music, or just the name and the decals on the cabinet made this stand out in 1978, but a lot of people do miss the key thing about Space Invaders. You see, in Space Invaders, you've got lives, and these days that might not sound like such a big deal, but before this, video games tended to come in two varieties, multiplayer contests like Pong, and timed single-player games. Space Invaders wasn't the first shoot 'em up game, but in what came before, you had just 90 seconds or however long to score as many points as possible. Space Invaders, though, well, that you keep playing as long as you stay alive. Live. Don't die and you can keep racking up points. That hook alongside its tremendous style is what made it a hit. Space Invaders certainly borrowed some ideas from earlier games, but in this it all came together in a very appealing whole. And this is very much the original versions of Space Invaders that we're seeing here. It is emulating the original arcade game. Actually, the revised version of Space Invaders with a bit more colour that came out a few months after the very first monochrome version, but anyway, it is the real deal. Not any sort of remake or port to any other system, and you could say the same about Pac-Man 2, which also makes an appearance in the lineup. And it might still be from the gaming stone age, but I absolutely love it. And yes, I'm not really a skilled high score player on this or, well, anything really. But I do know enough about Pac-Man to tell you this definitely passes the sniff test. It is very much the original arcade game from 1980, faithfully emulated. There's been a few remakes and ports of Pac-Man, actually that is an understatement. Of course there's literally thousands of versions of Pac-Man, but I don't think any of them really surpass the original. The ghost's artificial intelligence, as simple as it is, is unmistakable and it is here, along with the original glitches too. And yes, I am trying not to get too bogged down in individual games here, but there is loads of stuff that really keeps dragging me in. The user interface for selecting games is definitely easy to use and very responsive. The Nintendo eShop is maddening on the Switch, and if you've ever experienced it, you'll probably know what I'm talking about, but thankfully this isn't like that. If you've ever used an anything streaming service before, this is the same sort of deal and it's just as easy to navigate. You can search for specific titles, there's suggestions, trending games, all that kind of stuff. One game that I was very happy to see pop up is Bubble Bubble, a game that I love and once again, this is the true arcade game. The NES version of this is pretty decent to be fair, but really it's the Taito original that you need to be playing. And another thing to be thankful for is the fact that the controls are very sharp. I'm using the PC version of Antstream. It's on a few platforms that was the easiest for me, and I was a bit worried about the controls, but that's turned out to be no problem. My old wired Xbox controller works absolutely fine. Maybe not a big surprise, it is, of course, widely supported, but also my favourite retro controller, this iBuffalo Super NES pad. Don't ask me where you can get one, they don't seem to make them anymore, but it does work fine despite being very obscure. And Bubble Bubble, well, it just doesn't get any easier. It's insane how hard this game is, and also the bizarre depth of its play mechanics. To actually beat it properly, you do need to beat the secret super mode with two players. Not an easy test to even work out what you're supposed to do, let alone to actually do it. There's a hundred levels and so many secrets, honestly they could have had a quarter of the content and 99% of this game's audience would never have noticed, certainly not in the pre-internet days of 1986 when this came out. 
The game is just loaded with synchronicity, everything related to everything else, bonuses that appear depend on what you've done in game. And Stream does support local multiplayer though, so if you actually want to beat this game with the good ending and you've got a co-conspirator, well you can do it here. And you know what, pretty much everything I've seen on Antstream has been a winner in some respect. Not every game is a good one, in fact BMX Ninja is really spectacularly awful. Especially bad in every way, but it was popular back in the days of 8-bit budget games and I'm sure there's going to be some nostalgia value in this for those that remember it. You probably wouldn't want to actually spend money to buy this, but as a quick laugh tucked away on a streaming service with a load of other stuff you actually want, it is worth a go. But another game on here that is absolutely not, not terrible is Metal Slug, another one from my favourites list. It's a storming game with the weirdest, blackest sense of humour, and yes, once again, it is insanely hard. You know, it's a tough one when even speedrunners can't beat the game without dying, but still, it's a wonderfully entertaining cartoon pageant of the grim absurdities of war. And it's also got some of the very best pixel art you'll see anywhere ever. I should probably point out that Antstream is, as the name suggests, a streaming service, which means it's cloud-based. Is that good? Is that not? Well, it depends on how you look at it. You do need a constant internet connection to use this, but, well, that is pretty much all you need. It's got low system requirements and no compatibility problems. It all just works. I live in the middle of nowhere with a terrible internet connection, but it's still been just fine for me. You might have seen that red icon on some of the gameplay footage and that's telling me the connection is spotty, but even with that showing, I've not actually had any interrupted play. So if, like me, you're in a rural place with rural internet connections, well, that will do the job. Now, there is another side to Antstream, which I didn't think I would be massively into at first, but it did end up drawing me in. Tournaments, achievements and challenges. There is a load of different things on offer and I'm surprised how much I'm enjoying it. Right now there's a Defender 2 tournament on the NES game and I might have had a look at this, I might have played a couple of games. It's not bad, a decent blaster, but I don't think I would have put that much into it though. Make it part of a tournament though and suddenly it's so much more compelling. You have just one life to score as many points as possible. Of course the ultimate winner being the one with the highest score at the end of the month long competition. Now every bit more you can eke out of your score will bump you further up the leaderboard. Every advantage you can muster gives you some tangible progress. I can't imagine I ever would have sweated over getting a few extra points in a game like this, usually, but now I am because, well, I'm probably not going to win this one, but I might claw my way up the rankings a bit. Another one going on as I record this is R-Type 2, and again, I'm drawn into this and playing maybe in a different way than what I would do usually. One thing that's missing from the retro gaming experience for me, and I'm sure many of you too, is sort of how the social aspect of it played into the games. Modern games have online leaderboards and all that kind of stuff, and, well, old offline games didn't really have that, but there was a sort of meat space equivalent. You didn't play games in isolation, you played them with friends, or you played them in crowded arcades, and you were competing with other people. Tiny little victories matter much more when you're going up against your peers and these features of Antstream definitely help to bring that back. All the games have their own leaderboard, so whatever your high score is, it goes on there. Right now I'm 4,311th on Gallagher, but by the time this gets put out I might have upped that a bit. One thing to note though is that these challenges often cost gems to enter and the prize is more gems, which I know sounds a bit like scammy mobile game stuff, but well, if you've paid for the premium account, you can play every game on here as much as you'd like. That doesn't cost any extra. It's just that the gems seem to be the currency for tournaments and challenges. Again, I wasn't sold on the idea to begin with, but actually it does kind of add a little bit of extra excitement to the competitive aspect. You can, as I say, play any game as much as you want if you've got the subscription, but the gems sort of make the tournaments, the competitions, a bit more meaningful. 
they're not hard to come by, you get a load for just logging in, and it is a nice way of keeping score. But this does bring me on to the pricing, which I'm not going to list directly in the video. There's different packages for different periods of time, and of course, different currencies. How much you actually pay depends on what package you're buying and where you're buying it from, but it isn't really that expensive. Yeah, it's like Netflix for retro games. You pay a monthly fee, but it's not a huge amount. It all seems to be pretty transparent. They're not locking you into stuff with hidden fees, and you don't need to jump through a lot of hoops to cancel it either. There's over 1,400 games on here, I think. An awful lot of big names and some very pleasant surprises. There is quite a few Amstrad CPC games on here, and if there's one unloved classic game platform out there, it is the CPC, so it's, it's nice to see some of those games available. I've been running this and capturing footage on my PC, just because that's the easiest way of doing it for me, but it is on a lot of platforms, including the Amazon Fire Stick, which might be quite an easy way of getting this into your living room. Also, if not when you see this then very soon, it will be available on the Xbox Store, the Microsoft Store, whatever they're branding it as now. Another very convenient platform, I know, for a lot of people. And it is the same across all these different versions. You do get the same games and everything. And it is all totally legit too. All these games are fully licensed from the original publishers, which I think has got to be a good thing. That's a bit mealy-mouthed, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. It's... <laughs> It's good that this isn't illegal, but there's so much stuff out there that's never been officially released. I hope a service like this might encourage more publishers to make more classic games available. And there's zero hassle setting all this up too. You're not going to have to mess around installing and setting stuff up. You just click on it and off you go. Most of the complaints you might have with this are things that could be viewed as features depending on your point of view. It's cloud-based, yes, and it's focused almost entirely on retro games. If you don't want that, well, this isn't going to please you, but if you like the idea of having these games easily accessible, well, this does what it claims to do very well. One minor quibble is that you have to click through every time you want to re-enter a tournament. If you get on a roll and want to keep entering and chipping away at your score, it does take you out of it a bit. Also, there's no online multiplayer yet. It is local co-op only, and actually local co-op is a bit of a welcome return. There's not many games that do that these days, but it would be nice if you could play fighting games online or whatever. Apparently, though, that is something they're working on, so that might appear in the future. So I came for the retro games, I ended up staying for the retro games, but I also ended up staying for the challenges, the achievements, the little extras that Antstream has added. This is Stuck in the Shaft, a neat challenge on the original elevator action. You have to score as many points as possible whilst stuck in the lift and with the lights out. This was a tournament a few days ago, and now you can still play this mode, but it doesn't have the same prize. An inventive little twist on the game, though. There is other social features as well. You can message people, you can follow people, you can see how they score in relation to you, and there does seem to be a very active Discord, too. If you want to give this a try, there is a link in the description and in the pinned comment. It's really not a huge investment, and if you're a retro fan, you will find things to entice you. Old favourites, hidden gems, and stuff you've played before, but presented in a different way. Thank you, as always, to my wonderful Patreons, those wonderful names up on the screen right now. Your help is greatly appreciated, as always. And I think that is where I'm going to leave this for now. Thanks for watching, thanks for getting this far, and I'll see you next time. I was really tempted when <laughs> recording this voiceover to refer to Gallagher as Galaga, just because I know it'll wind people up. I mean, Sparse Invaders or Booble Booble, that would have been too obvious, but Galaga, yeah, it's conceivable that I might have thought it was pronounced that way. I didn't, though, so be thankful for that.